Case number two is from a 15 year old male. Here we have a plain film x-ray showing a lytic mass in the proximal tibia metaphysis. And you'll note that this mass has a circumscribed appearance with a sclerotic meaning newborn, new bone formation, which is white on this x-ray uh, border. So the, the mass is predominantly lytic, meaning black, not bony, with a sclerotic edge that is circumscribed, which tells us that the process is slow growing and the body has time to react to, respond to the presence of this mass. Note that this mass is eccentric, meaning it's towards one side, it's not in the middle. And then finally, you'll see that this patient is skeletally immature. And you note here on the uh, proximal fibula epiphysis, the growth plate is still open. So tissue is obtained. And here we have a bland spindle cell proliferation growing in a story form and intersecting fascicular pattern with admixed chemosiderin and osteoclast like giant cells. On the right, this mass has foamy macrophages um, in addition to the bland spindle cell proliferation. This is a non-ossifying fibroma, which is a benign and generally self-limited process, typically occurring in skeletally immature patients, most commonly in the second decade of life. It most commonly occurs in the metaphysis of long bones in the knee and or distal tibia, and it is most often seen in an eccentric, meaning towards one side, location of the bone. Radiogra radiographically, it's a well-defined lesion in the cortex with sclerotic and scalloped borders. Histologically, non-ossifying fibroma is a bland spindle cell proliferation, which grows in a story form pattern. You will often see osteoclast type giant cells, hemosiderin deposition, foamy macrophages, as well as cystic changes. You may often see reactive woven bone and that should not deter you from the diagnosis of non-ossifying fibroma, thinking that there's some bone formation. Non-ossifying fibroma has an excellent prognosis. Treatment is not necessary unless the patient is symptomatic.